one of the things I look at commonly first is water cycle because you are all aware of how important the rain is to you. And I will often say to a rancher, what would you pay me if I could double your rainfall? And they'll say, God, that, that is worth so much, I can't imagine it. Do you know it's easy to do? Just double the effectiveness. It's easy to do. It doesn't even cost money to do it. You make money doing it. If you can just change the thinking. Right, so on water cycle, I'd be looking at this and saying, on a scale of 1 to 10, where do I think this is? And as you gain experience, you'll do it better and better. But let's just take a wild guess first before we talk. Each one of you, on 1 to 10, where would you put the water cycle effectiveness on this land? Above 5, below 5? Below 5? Okay, that's probably good enough. Isn't that telling you you've got a tremendous lot of room for improvement? Now, here in Texas, I, I have talked about doubling the stocking rate, and I've had people with PhDs invoking God against me and saying, this is what God gave us and you can't do any better. It, it, that's not the way to think. Use your imagination, okay? So, water cycle, we could go a lot better. I would agree with you that it's low, and what are the clues I'm looking for? I usually go barefoot. <laughs> when people got their damn cameras, I put my shoes on. If you saw that film last night, they caught me barefoot a few times. You feel a bit like a hooligan. But I'm, I like to be barefoot and hunt barefoot and everything. And you can feel through your feet that the hardness of this ground. You can feel it. When you walk at home on your carpet, you don't have to be told you're on the carpet. When you walk onto the concrete, you don't have to be told, you feel it. If you're used to working, w walking barefoot, you can feel the ground. And when it's soft, water soaks in. When it's hard, this is hard, water doesn't soak in well. And to, for the water to be effective, you've got to have air and water. And so when I look at it and I see <coughs> the plants, and I'll, I'll just narrow leafed like this, and I see a lot of narrow leaf plants, that's telling me that there's not a good balance of air and water in the soil. So that, that alone is telling me, from a water cycle point of view, this could be much more effective. If I could get air into the soil and water. Because if you get too much water in without the air, you get narrow leaf plants that grow very slowly. They're not very productive. If you get too much air in and not enough water, you get narrow leaf plants. You've got to try and get a balance between them, and usually it means a spongy, nice crumb structure. Gardeners know this, don't they? Yeah, so, so rather than going and taking, say, range management at college, go and join the old ladies in tennis shoes at the garden club. You'll actually learn better stuff. And I, I'm joking, but there's many a true word spoken in jest. Yeah. You see how narrow leafed yeah. it is? Yeah. No, I do see that. Mm. And that's a perennial. That's probably several years old, so it doesn't matter what time. But your point is good. If, if you come at the wrong time, and there may be something there. But when you're looking at perennials, now I'm seeing this is narrow-leaf, narrow-leaf, narrow-leaf. So I'm seeing a lot of that. And that would just tell me, okay, I can make a lot of improvement here. That's, and that's it, as simple as that. And then, okay, if we left water cycle for a moment, well, you can also see the cutting of the gully on the edge. You can see the hard soil as you came up. If you left water cycle for a moment and, um, well, before I leave it, is, is that clear what we were saying? And just how simple it is that even without experience of this land, you can see that it can be at least 100% better.